It's a special edition of InfoWars Nightly News, September 6, 2011, on this Tuesday edition. And what an important transmission this evening. I'm just five, six miles away from some of the worst wildfires Texas has seen in its history, the media is reporting. Uh, tens of thousands of acres, well over a thousand homes destroyed. Uh, there are fires encircling the city and inside the city. The biggest one stretches over 20 miles long, jumping the Colorado River. This all began when record uh, high-powered winds hit the state that's been ravaged by drought on Sunday. I watched as fires neared my home just a few miles away as the sheriff's department tried to dump water on it from helicopters. Well, tonight we're going to break down the fact that the feds have done what they always do. They've come in, taken control of the situation, and ordered the firefighters to stand down. That's coming up. Also, we're going to be looking at Fukushima, six plus months in uh, on this incredible disaster and the fact that it's still belching more radiation, just to point out that governments can't and won't protect you and have a long history of lying to the public. And of course, we'll tie in uh, the, the uh, crises here in Texas and the things that uh, FEMA is doing with the gun confiscation by FEMA in Katrina more than five years ago. That's all coming up tonight. So first, let's get into the wildfires here in the state of Texas. There are fires up in Dallas. There are fires down by San Antonio. Record drought. But the worst we've seen this year are surrounding Austin, Texas. Bastrop County, just east of town. Huge fire stretching over 20 miles. Fires at Steiner Ranch community, shutting down the community. Fires out in the Dripping Springs area. Major roads shut down. All of this happening. And in the middle of it, we have Governor Rick Perry, who pledged not to run for president, who now has come back to Texas, and he's saying that he's going to take good care of everybody and that the campaign means nothing. He's more than happy to fly around in helicopters and grandstand as our savior. And even the local news that normally is full of nothing but sports is cutting away from sports to focus uh, on the disaster. And everybody uh, was basically saying to, to, uh, you know, to Perry, thank God you left the campaign trail. Uh, now that you're here, you're going to take good care of us and, and, and bring the feds in. We need the feds to help us. And so Rick Perry said, FEMA, come in and save us. Well, now we have this headline over here. Feds to assume control of Bastrop County fire. Volunteer firemen turned away. And I've made some calls to multiple people that I know in Bastrop and that I also know in Gonzales that's nearby, and I've confirmed that firefighters from all over Texas converged within 12 hours of these fires breaking out Sunday afternoon and were turned away and were told even yesterday before FEMA announced they were coming that you've got to go to the National Forest Service, you've got to get FEMA approval to be here, that the State uh, Firefighting Association are basically minions of the feds. Now, this is important. Until about five years ago, especially with fires, the governor would call out the National Guard under his control to fight fires and coordinate with firefighters, who volunteer, regular firemen and women, you name it. Well, now you've got to basically go to FEMA if you've signed up for federal support beforehand. And then FEMA takes three or four days to show up. And then once they show up, they say, well, you were already here fighting fires. You didn't go through our bureaucracy, so go home. And, and the firefighters uh, that I've talked to and the firefighters that are also in the paper say that they say, well, I want to sign up to help. Well, we're not set up for that yet. So then there's no response. And that's what's being announced in our news. They're announcing since Sunday night. It's now Tuesday evening. So for two days... They've been saying, we're not going to fight the fires, just evacuate as we wait for the feds to show up. And now the local fire departments that did their job and didn't stand down, the feds are telling them to take a hike. And the firefighters that are coming in to help them are being told to take a hike. Why is this being done? It's all about a federal power grab. What happened in Katrina? 
What did we see in Katrina? We saw them show up day one and go in and cut the police communication tower lines. That was in the news. Till the police put armed guards there to protect it, FEMA still came back and tried to cut it. Because FEMA said, the police aren't doing what we said. You're letting volunteers come in from around the country. We are in control. And by the way, we're going into the high and dry areas, and we are going to take the firearms. And we're going to get to that piece here in a moment. But first, I wanted to show you uh, some footage. That's footage that Rob Jacobson shot pretty close to our office here today, just east of here. Uh, that's what you see billowing up uh, basically in any direction you look as uh, Austin uh, is ringed in flame. We'll go back to some of that footage in a moment. But first, I want to go to a clip, kind of a compilation of mainstream media uh, with Rick Perry flying around surveying the damage. Now, as of Monday, t more than 24 hours into this, it was News Radio 590 KLBJ talk radio that I heard coordinating with firefighters calling in, coordinating on, on live shows, and, 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 and uh, KLBJ reporting, well, they haven't gotten old folks out of Steiner Ranch community that they evacuated. And meanwhile, the hippies were all out trying to evacuate animal shelters that weren't even in danger as some stunt to get animals adopted, which I'm fine with if it wasn't a stunt and people weren't in danger. So 24 hours later, they said, we might want to get the old folks home at Steiner Ranch. It's a whole old folks area since they evacuated the rest of that giant subdivision on the river. We better get the old folks out. And then Rick Perry, you know, was asked by a reporter, hey, how is this going to affect uh, your whole campaign? And Rick Perry said, hey, the campaign means nothing to me right now. I'm busy about saving lives. Really? And then everybody cheered, yay, he's here. He's here to save us. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not paying any attention to politics right now. There, there's plenty of time to take care of that. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is teleprompter free television. That's why m a minute before we went on air, uh, I had to basically uh, uh, decide to get on air a little bit later just so I could go over these news articles, just so I could make phone calls, just so I could confirm this information. And sure enough, sure enough, that is exactly what we have now discovered. Not only from the Gonzales Cannon, uh, the major paper uh, there in that town, but also from sources I got on the phone with in Bastrop and also in Gonzales. This is unprecedented. Now, FEMA's trying to spin this. When you read the article, the Gonzalez Cannon talks to these firefighters, people that drove in from uh, Kirbyville, uh, from Kingsville, uh, from other areas, and, and they drove in and they told everybody, hey, we're here to help. This is on Monday. And the Texas Fire Chiefs Association USFA and FEMA told them that if you wanted to volunteer even from another department or from a volunteer fire department, most areas that is the firefighters, that you have to be activated by the National Forestry Service through FEMA. Now, Perry is asked about when's FEMA coming. He says, well, I'm calling them in. They're coming Wednesday. Wednesday hadn't happened yet. But this morning, I drove over to Steiner Ranch and watched dozens of fire trucks lined up and what looked like FEMA people going around giving them orders. There were FEMA vehicles out there. So they're already here, but they don't have the infrastructure set up. So they're ordering the volunteer fire departments, the regular fire departments and others to stand down while FEMA gets its act together and I guess demands more congressional funding before they do anything. They waited three days, four days, five days, six days to help anybody. All they did was put a cordon around New Orleans and shoot people trying to walk out on the highways and then go to the dry areas and confiscate the firearms. This is incredible. But there's more on Rick Perry over here uh, on the screen. It, uh, the other article we've got is out of Raw Story, and uh, they're also reporting on a KVUE TV report. Texas Governor Rick Perry cut fire department funding by 75% from, from $30 million to $7 million. 
last year and then again in the legislature this year. Now, again, if we're going to have a government system, it better be for police and fire. But instead, all over the country, under austerity, they're cutting police. They're cutting fire. The police aren't responding to normal crime. They're only out there revenue generating. They admit this in most areas. The fire departments won't show up unless you pay them extra fees because they're having their funding cut. This is happening everywhere. But we're paying trillions of dollars to the private Federal Reserve and our income taxes to be paid to offshore banks in a bailout that we don't even owe to derivatives we didn't create. This is why I'm so angry. This is why I'm so upset. This guy's for forced inoculations. This guy was for handing over 8,000 miles of Texas roads and em an eminent domain to center of Spain and others with the Napa Superhighway. This guy was Al Gore's chief of staff in Texas. He supported Hillary Care in the mid-1990s. This guy, Rick Perry, on your screen, is an absolute joke. Now, in some of the other news, Again, Perry expected FEMA in Texas Wednesday. Perry has said that he expects Federal Emergency Management Agency to arrive in Texas Wednesday. That's CBS News. Well, they were already here yesterday telling everybody to stand down and today. And then a FEMA spokesperson told the paper, well, that is our procedure, but we're not there yet, so we have an order to stand down. But meanwhile, I've talked to the firefighters, and the Texas Firefighting Association says they've been told stand down till FEMA gets here. This is incredible. So Perry and Obama and the rest of, uh, of them are fiddling while Texas, while Texas burns. Uh, just incredible. Continuing with other Rick Perry news, Perry mum on GOP debate as Texas wildfires rage. Rick Perry never wants to debate. That's why he debated, what, once in his last gubernatorial run? Because he doesn't want to be called the carpet for issues. But there's record funding for DHS and Homeland Security, but it's all spying on your neighbors, threat fusion centers to federalize police, face scanning cameras, microphones, license plate reading cameras. None of it has to do with fires and earthquakes and real emergencies because it's all a political and paramilitary system to suppress the people. Speaking to CBS News from the state capital of Austin, Perry wouldn't say whether he'd attended the Republican debate scheduled for Wednesday night at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Library in Simi Valley, California. So there you go. He's still figuring out with his political pundits what the best, uh, best move is. Now, we got Gerald Salente coming up. We got Paul Joseph Watson uh, coming up as well. Forgot to mention that uh, at the start because I'm so angry about what's happening here. And the fact that the fire's coming this way, it could burn down this studio. And, and FEMA will probably stand right there and roast hot dogs while it happens and then grandstand as saviors. Maybe even come to my house and take my guns. People will say, well, George Bush did it. Hell, Rick Perry, please take our guns. This is disgusting by a criminal, disgusting political class that thinks they own us and use every crisis for another out-of-control federal power grab. Now, lest you forget... Remember Katrina, remember the FEMA stand down of all the police that tried to help and firefighters and rescue people and EMTs from around the country. Never forget that. So we're going to go to this piece reminding you that in an emergency, they'll load you into a super dome. But if you live in the wealthy high and dry area with a generator, they're going to come put you in handcuffs, blow open your gun safe, take your firearms. And five and a half years later, these people haven't gotten their guns back. Remember, that's who Perry called in was FEMA. That's what you'd expect from a cheerleader for Al Gore. Guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police department, if you're home! Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. We need to make sure, too, that uh, whenever we knock on doors, people refuse to leave. We need to make note, call it in. They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion. Sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. Look and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. 
A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. I said, it's not even loaded. And I dropped it on the floor. You got a gun, left, left. Well, they punched me in the face. Left now. Look at my black and blue marks. Look at, look at what they did to me. They dragged me out of here. I really thought that. Okay, so there's the terrorist in America. That's who the system is going after. And I want to encourage folks watching this show tonight here at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv, you who've made this transmission possible, to tape this, to record it. Uh, we're going to restream it after the show tonight and to get it out to everybody you know, post it on YouTube, you name it. Because the people need to understand Tyrants use any crises as a power grab. What government in their right mind would, for all intents and purposes, five years ago, now six, abolish the National Guard? The National Guard was always under the governor's control. Governors could ask other states to help them. They knew how to get bulldozers out, fire berms, knock out fires. I mean, the minute they got started, it'd be, come on in, fire department, help us. The governor over the state, now... Our National Guard has been federalized. Most of them are overseas. The few that are here are standing around and FEMA tells them what to do. And our own state's fire departments are being told to stand down. I mean, it's unprecedented. It's just like people being arrested all over the country for having lemonade stands or uh, garage sales or uh, gardens in their yard. You know, 93 days in jail the lady faced. It, it, it seems obscene and crazy. Well, Hitler seemed obscene and crazy. Stalin did. Mao did. It's about power. It's about breaking your will. And our republic is under attack. Now, expanding on this before we get to Paul Watson uh, and Gerald Salente and this extended special InfoWars Nightly News report, I want to get into Fukushima because on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, we have links to mainstream news articles today where Fukushima is still melting down. Five of the six giant reactors have totally exploded and melted down. And in the last few weeks, they admit that three days into Fukushima, happened on a Friday, by Monday, they knew that three of the reactors, later it was all five of the six, had exploded. I knew on that Monday morning when I watched the reactor ex explode that it was a complete and total meltdown and a meltdown explosion. And then I interviewed top nuclear physicists who'd been in Japan and who had gotten samples. Of course, Western governments all knew what the mushroom cloud meant, but it showed that fission had taken place, that a Chernobyl-type explosion, much bigger than Chernobyl, had taken place. That was reactor three with uranium and super deadly plutonium. And it turned out that they had 500,000 spent fuel rods well, it was a total of 614,000, but, but on that particular uh, 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 reactor, the majority of them, 500 plus thousand, were stored on the roof and in holding tanks and were spewed into the air. Now, a couple months into this, how did the EPA respond? And you can go to the articles on our sites and link through the EPA. They came out and said, we're going to raise radioactive isotopes in the dozens of types that are in the air blowing across the Pacific onto the U.S., we're going to raise the isotopes levels. That's just one of many explosions. We're going to raise it from the levels that we say were safe to 1,000 times what they previously were with some isotopes to 25,000 with others and some isotopes 100,000 times what they previously said was safe. And it ran the gamut from 1,000 times, 3,000 times, to 100,000 times with actual links to the EPA. And, and the EPA came out and said, hey, we're going to have a public comment period. We're still going to do what we want, kind of like the Super Congress controls the power of the purse now, not the General Congress. And if Congress doesn't vote the way they want, the Super Congress just does it anyways. It's the same thing with the EPA. Oh, there's a quiet comment period where you can email us. We're going to raise the level of radiation uh, 1,000 to 100,000 times what's safe, and, but, but we'll take your comment. And, of course, the vast majority of comments by scientists and others were this is a horrible idea, radiation's very bad for you, and they just said we don't care, and they did raise it a few months ago after a month-long comment period. Now, 
The Prime Minister of Japan's had to resign over this. Most of the other ministers have. They've got radiation sickness. People are dying. They tried to keep it quiet. Uh, but I've even been in hotel rooms and watched Japanese TV in English on it where they are now admitting it. I was out in L.A. about a month ago and, and was shocked to see them admitting what we were getting from reporters months before. So it's now come out. But the only place it hasn't come out is here in the U.S. A month into this, they were having levels 25, 30, 40, 50, depending on what state, as far away as Vermont, on the other side uh, you know, of North America from Japan, uh, over across the Pacific, in milk, in produce. When they had Chernobyl in 1986, for six months all over Europe where the plume hit, from northern to western to eastern to southern, they brought food in from other continents, frozen. They brought frozen powdered milk in. No one was allowed to eat the cows. No one was allowed to eat the milk where it aggregates and, 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 and builds up. Bioaccumulates is the proper term. No one was allowed to eat it or touch it. And they estimate the UN does over a million deaths from cancer. Here, the Japanese got caught just mislabeling stuff as foreign to let folks eat it and turned it out, uh, turned out it was very radioactive. Then, expanding on that, I just can't believe this is happening. It comes into the United States and they just raise the level and say it's safe. The elite have gone crazy. They're on such power trips, they're fiddling while Rome burns like Nero. They think they're invincible. All right, let's go ahead and get into some other important news dealing with brainwashing. That's right, brainwashing. We're being taught the official fable that 9-11 was an outside job, but when you actually study the facts, it is a complete fairy tale. Now, in the UK, as well as the United States, it's now being added to children's textbooks, uh, the complete official story. Now, the mayor of London has made some very bizarre statements and we're going to be uh, looking at this in more depth in just a moment. But there's the report at Infowars.com. Official 911 fable to become part of school curriculum. Government supported effort to encourage critical thinking actually encourages obedient regurgitation of lies. This upcoming Sunday marks the 10th anniversary of the tragic attacks of September 11th. And we're going to be having special reports every weeknight looking at different facets of 9-11. This coming Thursday, we're going to look at the 10 smoking guns of 9-11 that prove that the attacks were an inside job meant to create a pretext to destroy our constitutional republic, establish a domestic police state, and launch a global corporate empire that would be defended and expanded using American blood, sweat, and tears. But I wanted to talk to Paul Joseph Watson, of PrisonPlanet.com, who joins us from England with a breakdown of an article he wrote today, Official 911 Fable to be part of school curriculum. Then we're going to expand into some other news reports, RAI, Novostat, and others. Al-Qaeda acquires weapons in Libya, EU official, head of counterterrorism says, and more, including the one, the only, Chuck Norris coming out and saying, why is the government rebranding the threat of terror from Muslim Al-Qaeda onto Tea Partiers, conservatives, and predominantly wicked white people? Joining us with more on all of this is Paul Watson. Paul, uh, this is uh, pretty amazing, but it's hidden in plain view. The official fable, despite the fact that in some polls, the vast majority question it, the official fable of 9-11 is to now be taught to U.S. school children, force-fed. Well, in the United Kingdom as well, yeah. I mean, this, this reeks of creepy, top-down, government-sponsored indoctrination. Uh, and what this is about is a London, it's called the London 9-11 Project, and it poses as a charity, but in fact it's a creature of, of the establishment. It was actually launched yesterday in London with this unveiling of this macabre 9-11 memorial by the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. Uh, and this charity is also supported by the Port Authority of New York, uh, Common Purpose, which is a in, it's a steering committee in the United Kingdom, um, and many figures of the establishment, including the treasurer of the Conservative ruling party in Britain. 
Uh, and this whole project claims that it's about encouraging students. They're going to be aiming this at teenagers uh, 12 to 16 years old in British schools to en encourage students to engage in critical thinking about 9-11. And yet its first mandate when it was rolled out was to, quote, demolish conspiracy theories about the attacks. That's right. We or have the London Telegraph uh, interview and, and it was in your article yesterday, but this is also going on here in the U.S., a similar program is why I raised that point, with the mayor of London, like Bozo the Clown, unveiling uh, the, uh, this new memorial and then saying, it's our job to have a controlled demolition of these conspiracy theories that 10 years on continue to grow. And we've got all these BBC hit pieces, U.S. hit pieces. The system is scared to death. I mean, their favorite tool of staging terror attacks and using it to crack down on the public, they are hopping mad, Paul, that it's not working. They're mad and they're desperate, which is why this week sees a complete onslaught of new 9-11 hit pieces against 9-11 Truth by the likes of BBC, National Geographic and the History Channel, which I find it pretty rich, pretty ironic that the History Channel, every time I turn it on, is talking with, you know, lending credence and credibility to UFOs and alien invasions, giving people platform to spread that. And topic, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Chubacabras. Yeah, everything that's rife with misinformation, and yet anything to do with 9-11, it's always a hit piece against 9-11 truth. Well, because the global banksters don't care if you're obsessed with leprechauns all day, but they are concerned if you know that Building 7 was blown up and they announced it on TV beforehand, or the U.S. troops were already massed in Afghanistan and in and around for the invasion, or hijackers trained at U.S. bases. Please continue, Paul. Well, precisely. They don't want real critical thinking, which is why when they say, oh, well, this is to encourage critical thinking because people are confused about the attacks. It's not that. It's the opposite. Anything that questions the officially state approved fable of 9-11 is rejected. This is indoctrination. It's the opposite of critical thinking. But this is great because they're so discredited and their false flag attack and 7-7 as well is the pretext to sell this total abolition of, of, of freedom, their great new religion of tyranny, uh, the, the foundational event, uh, like the birth of baby Jesus, this is the birth of baby fake terror, it's all basically been overturned now. And so the more they flail about bleeding out, uh, the more people question because they have no credibility. Don't they get it that when they attack us, they only add credibility? I love it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why the polls, whereas immediately after 9-11 and in the years following, um, fear of terrorism amongst the American public was up at 80%, fear that an attack would be about to happen. It went down to 60, and now it's at less than 40 it's in the 30s so people are, are not afraid of terrorism because they're starting to find out the real forces behind it well look i why. do british radio big national I, I, do, I do the public i do the talk sport that's private i do it all the time the host admit that they will beg for callers paul that disagree with me when i'm on like a two-hour interview sometimes and one person will call in and they can't even talk they'll get hundreds of emails and, and text messages uh, as big on uk talk radio we are the majority. I mean, I saw five years ago a poll in the New York Times, Scientific, Angus and Reed New York Times, 83% question the official story. I mean, their fable, their hoax, just like the JFK, 92% on average know the government did that. And now we have uh, the uh, tapes coming out with Arthur Schlesinger, the famous historian, uh, with Jackie Kennedy saying the government killed him. We've got LBJ's own lawyer, Barr McClellan coming out saying they killed him. Uh, we've got uh, his own mistress coming out, LBJ's mistress. We've got all these witnesses and the head hitman, E. Howard Hunt, who ran assassination teams worldwide. I mean, what more do we need, Paul? Well, this is exactly why they're freaking out, and this is why they need positive reinforcement, a psychological brainwashing ploy um, to ram home the pseudoscience that giant steel frame buildings can collapse in their own footprint at near free fall speed and it's about reinforcing the or that magic passports survive on their own and are found the same day it's 
Right, precisely, because people just don't believe it anymore, so they need to get it in at the level where it's 11 and 12 year olds who most of whom have never even heard about 9-11 or thought it was something completely different to what it was so they're getting in very early with this clockwork orange style brainwashing they'll probably get out the uh the uh eyebrow clips later on and and subject the the kids to this because they say that it's to demolish conspiracy theories and the confusion surrounding the attacks. It's not confusion. It's the fact that people have looked into it for themselves, used critical thinking, God forbid, and are coming to their own conclusions, which is not what they want. Well, Paul, the same thing is happening uh, in the UK. They've, uh, you know, don't let them show the Al Gore film to kids because it's been proven in court. It's a fraud. Uh, here domestically, he gives cussing tirades at the Aspen Institute, saying no one is uh, listening to us anymore and, and, and admitting that he's being laughed at uh, in most quarters. And it turns out the sea levels have dropped now. Uh, so there's Spiegel's reporting, ah, oh, global warming makes them drop, not rise. So many of their hoaxes, as, as the Club of Rome said, what, 20 something years ago in a report we've covered, uh, they said, we're gonna use the threat of fake terror to take people's rights, but also climate change and other things to take people's rights. And it's just not working anymore. Now, shifting gears into another 9-11 area, uh, I noticed the cover of Time Magazine last week says, the new greatest generation, uh, military veterans, first responders, folks like that, how they're going to lead the leadership you know, gap in America. Uh, the problem is the firemen, the police, the military that were heroes of 9-11, they've been barred from being at ground zero. Uh, that's now come out. So they've been barred from being there. Uh, and they now, even the French news agency today reports that they've got massive increases in cancer. And the reason that they're barred is because they're afraid to have them there at ground zero with the president and stuff because they don't buy any of the official fables. They know the dust was deadly. So what does it say about the system having to circle the wagons that even the cops, the military and the fire people are not welcome at the 10th anniversary? Well, let's not forget that in the very days after 9-11, the government was caught in a brazen and transparent lie when the EPA announced that the air was safe to breathe. People trusted the government, and years later, the majority of 9-11 first responders are either dead or are sick and dying of these illnesses. So that's why they don't want them there, because the majority of people who are actually involved in the rescue mission are aware of 9-11 truth, because... Uh, people like We Are Change have held numerous events to support these individuals as the government betrayed them, withheld the payments, which they're now finally being forced to give to them in drips and drops. But exactly, that's why they don't want them at the official uh, memorial. They only want politicians there who can use it as a soapbox, as a photo op, because these first responders are genuine people who have found the truth, who have come to the truth, and many of them obviously witnessed the explosions, the demolitions on the day itself. That's why the government does not want them there. That's right, Paul. Now, in closing, the biggest news here at the end, and then we're going to go to break and come back with uh, Gerald Salente and this road warrior type uh, scenario that we're facing uh, as a society. Uh, L.A. Times, countless other publications have admitted, okay, uh, the leader there in Libya is, is al-Qaeda. We are giving them weapons. Uh, that's just the way it is. And it's being reported on that the EU counterterrorism coordinator uh, is saying that, yes, al-Qaeda has gotten the weapons and is basically the new government. Now, this has been too much for Chuck Norris, uh, who's been a big supporter of going after, quote, Muslim extremism. I've interviewed him on the show. He's awake to a lot of stuff, but he's come out and said, Fed still enable terrorists 10 years after 9-11. And the first thing he quotes is Infowars.com and how we showed the DHS training videos that are going out publicly where all the terrorists are white people and it's, quote, minorities reporting them. Now, now what this is is just a rebranding that, okay, first we went after a minority that, that was seen as unpopular, like Hitler did, so people would accept taking their rights. Now we're flipping it on a group that's seen, quote, as dominant. And the, and the fact that Chuck Norris is coming out and saying, why are the feds enabling terrorists? And he talks about Amor al hanging out at the Pentagon, the number three in Al-Qaeda, Paul. Uh, he talks about uh, just this incredible uh, development here where the State Department won't release his public records of his travels, quote, for his privacy. No, they're covering up. So Chuck Norris comes within one micron of basically saying this whole thing's a fraud. 
and this is in Town Hall, World Net Daily, his, his columns carried by hundreds of newspapers. I think the system's gone too far. I had neighbors this weekend talking about how our government's putting and NATO's putting Al Qaeda in in Libya. Uh, here's the headline at uh, Infowars.com. You wrote Chuck Norris warns of DHS war on white Americans. Uh, what do you make of this? I mean, this is just too much for people to be told you're giving your rights up because of Al Qaeda, but the first responders aren't allowed at Ground Zero. And by the way, the big Al Qaeda is whitey. Well, it's waking up a lot of conservatives who wouldn't otherwise come to these conclusions because they've seen these DHS public service announcements and they've seen that in them the vast majority of the terrorists portrayed are white middle class Americans and the people reporting them are minorities. Now, if, if it was the other side where it was all black people being the terrorists and all white people reporting them to the authorities, that would be just as scary. The fact is, the DHS is race baiting, and yet the Southern Poverty Law Center a few days ago comes out, admits that these DHS videos do contain, quote, mostly white terrorists, while actors portraying citizens who report their suspicious activities are all minorities. That's a quote. So they admit it. They admit that there's a racial dimension to these videos, and yet they've they go got some ads where it's nothing but white people that are the terrorists. The point is, is that they're clearly rebranding it. And three years ago, we got the internal Homeland Security documents, Paul. And the whole thing was about gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, Ron Paul supporters, which then the, the left arm of the globalist vulture, Chris Matthews, says is all white. So, so, quote, minorities don't feel like they're welcome. But from a liberal perspective, it's not racism, but they sell, hey, you're not welcome there. Then they say, okay, it's only white. You're not welcome to be a libertarian if you're not if you're not white, but but again it's the controlled establishment li limousine liberal saying that, and then once okay it's all white okay now you're the Al Qaeda. Precisely, and I mean they admit in the video that it's all white people, and yet then they accuse you of crossing the Rubicon of race and believing in paranoid conspiracy theories simply for pointing the fact out. And not to mention uh, the FBI, their extremist probe called Operation Vigilant Eagle was all about um, targeting returning veterans as terrorists. We had, of course, the Boy Scouts Explorer program where Boy Scouts were trained by Homeland Security to hunt down disgruntled Iraq war veterans, which again is pretty rich because while the federal government is simultaneously sending planes to bomb Libya in support of this Libyan Islamic fighting group, which killed U.S. troops in Iraq, part of the Al-Qaeda group that they support now. Simultaneously, they're saying that returning veterans who fought in Iraq against these terrorists now supported by the U.S. government are the new security threat for domestic terrorism. So it completely reveals the fact that, as I mean, stretching far back as 10 years ago, you had the video where FEMA was saying the founding fathers were terrorists. This has been a gradual build-up, and we've been tracking it for over a decade, and now it's coming to fruition. Well, Paul, that's what this has always been about by the globalist, is basically saying everybody's a terrorist. I saw reports early on in 2002 where they said a priest, a woman with a baby, someone wearing blue jeans, a uh, cell phone. I mean, we, we published these Homeland Security documents we were sent where they teach cops everybody's a terrorist. But for the public, they take an unpopular group on average who they just blame for 9-11, Muslims. They say they're all extremists. And people say, well, that's a minority. Take their rights. You know, it's a tribal idea. Now they flip it on all the good old boys that said, yeah, or round up all the brown people. Now they're saying, no, it's you. It's the white guy. I mean, I told people a long time ago this was coming. Uh, we, we could see it coming a million miles away. Paul Watson over at PrisonPlanet.com will continue to watch your very informative reports, uh, the video reports you're posting to PrisonPlanet.tv and also the news articles you're writing. I know it's almost, well, it's past midnight over there where you're at, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Paul Watson, thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Alex. All right, there goes Paul Watson. Well, look, this show is supposed to be 30 minutes long, and I've got TV networks and stations that want to pick it up. But here in the fledgling launch of InfoWars Nightly News, it can be 45 minutes. It can be an hour long, as long as we get the show launched by 7 o'clock Central. Now, we're going to go back uh, to uh, the subject of what's happening in the economy on the other side uh, with Gerald Salente. But as we take you out to break, Ron Paul has gotten aggressive, and that's what we need to see. 
Uh, they've got a new Gallup poll out showing he's only four points behind uh, the leader, Rick Perry, uh, in Iowa. And, and he's now put out a new ad uh, titled Rick Perry, Texas cheerleader for Al Gore. The establishment called him extreme and unelectable. They said he was the wrong man for the job. It's why a young Texan named Ron Paul was one of only four congressmen to endorse Ronald Reagan's campaign for president, believing in Reagan's message of smaller government and lower taxes. After Reagan, Senator Al Gore ran for president, pledging to raise taxes and increase spending pushing his liberal values. And Al Gore found a cheerleader in Texas named Rick Perry. Rick Perry helped lead Al Gore's campaign to undo the Reagan revolution, fighting to elect Al Gore president of the United States. Now, America must decide who to trust, Al Gore's Texas cheerleader or the one who stood with Reagan. Ron Paul, restore America now. We are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News here Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv forward slash news. We are expanding our operations against the global crime syndicate. We are in their face in defense of human liberty and a new renaissance for humanity in the fight against global banker occupation. And someone who's been on the very front line of that fight for a very long time is the best-selling author and researcher, top trends forecaster, Gerald Salente. And with more on what's happening with our economy and with a breakdown of future trends is Gerald Salente joining us from New York. Gerald, thank you for coming on with us tonight. Well, I like being on a news show with real news. Well, thank you, my friend. Good to have you here. Uh, so much is is uh, is unfolding. You've you've predicted the collapse that we're now entering, uh, but still the very uh, banksters that promised us that they would fix everything uh, are telling us, well, things aren't going well. But don't worry, we're getting record bonuses, and it's not a problem. Uh, just continue to give us trillions in bailouts. In fact, Bernanke is back in the news today, saying U.S. banks' exposure to Europe is manageable. But it turns out these foreign banks are the ones that basically own our banks. Gerald Salente, what do you say to that? Well, I would ask uh, public enemy number one, Osama bin Bernanke, why then have they pumped in, what was it, $1.2 trillion into foreign banks and U.S. banks, just as society, general, the Royal Bank of Scotland. If all these banks are doing so great, what do they need our dough for? And no, the exposure is on both sides of the pond, and there's no way out. As a matter of fact, you know they call this guy Noriel Rabini, Dr. Doom, and they keep talking about his forecasts, and you know, he comes on after things sometimes happen, and then readjusts them as he did today in Bloomberg. And he said, I thought a few months ago that the perfect storm would be 2013. Well, in 2010, he said that we weren't going into a double dip recession. But here's what he goes on to say. And remember, he's a member of the White Shoe Boy Club. You need to restore economic growth, not five years from now. You need to restore it today. In the short term, we need to do massive stimulus, otherwise there's going to be another Great Depression. Where are we going to get this massive stimulus from, Mr. Rabini, who by the way said, you know, people that invest in gold are basically out of their mind and didn't think gold could go, well, maybe $1,500 an ounce. So now what they're saying is, and this is what they're all saying, is more stimulus. More stimulus means more digital dollars, means continued low interest rates, 
means a devaluation of all of the currencies that are doing this, such as the dollar and the euro. Now, Gerald, uh, looking at this, um, the banksters have created the Ponzi scheme. Madoff you know, said the first thing I learned when I got to Wall Street was that it's rigged, A, and B, it's a Ponzi scheme. And to compete in this, I had to do this. And he's absolutely right. Of all these criminals, he's just uh, average. But the Lloyd Blank finds they're doing God's work, the Alan Greenspans. We've got to bow down to them while they devalue the dollar and wreck our economy and feed everything into their into their globalist system. Why is it that the more wrong the bankers are, the more we're supposed to fall down uh, and worship them? Uh, now, now the mainstream media worships them more than ever, but they're losing all their viewers. All the polls show the general public is waking up to the bankers. So, so how long until they completely run out of time? Well, the first part of your question, why do we worship them and why are they getting away with it? Who was the guy who uh, began the whole deregulation of the Glass-Steagall Act that would have prevented the banksters from becoming these criminals that was put in place during the Great Depression so this wouldn't happen? What was his name, Robert Rubin? And who was he Treasury Secretary under? Gee, Bill Clinton. And, and who followed a couple of years later under George W. Bush? Hey, wasn't that Henry Paulson? Where did he come from, Alex? Gee, wasn't he the CEO of Goldman Sachs as well? And who's that guy now who's Obama's chief of staff? Oh, you know, Bill Daly. Daly? From that wonderful Chicago machine, the Daly machine? Yeah, that Bill Daly. And where did he come from? Gee, is it, wasn't he vice chairman of J.P. Morgan Chase? Doesn't anybody get it? Wall Street has hijacked Washington. It's the same game. Listen to what all of these politicians are saying. It's the same BS line. We got to deregulate industry. We got to give them a free ride so they can rape us more. Oh, and by the way, let's cut all the taxes for those rich guys and keep those multinationals like GE, who made $14 billion last year, paying no taxes at all as we give it to the little people. And, you know, just to make things a lot worse, you know, let's, let's increase the taxes for them. So the only key answers they keep coming up with is deregulation and cutting more taxes for the big guys. When is it going to collapse? As I've said, I've never seen a summer like this. I think we're going to see the winter of discontent. If it was an Arab spring, you're going to see a U.S. You're going to start seeing an unraveling more and more every day as you watch the news. So October is my month that, you know, and it's only a guesstimate, that we're going to see the big unraveling. But even if it doesn't happen in October, because you don't know what phony schemes they're going to come up with, it's going to happen eventually. And that's why I'm fully invested in gold. Now, Gerald, you put out your forecast over a year ago, uh, well over a year ago, and said that you believe that it would be evident that we were in a collapse by uh, December of 2010. And if you looked at John Williams' shadow stats, if you looked at all the old numbers that government would use to put out more accurate breakdowns, we'd been in a depression for two years at that point. Now they're calling it, Geithner is on the Meet the Prostitutes and other shows, Geithner's calling it the uh, greatest recession or the great recession. And we see the jobless numbers, the factory closings. We see all of this happening uh, and so more and more they're having to say, okay, it's a double dip recession. Well, a double dip recession that we never left is, is really a depression. So you've been proven right. It's just a deepening depression. So break down from your view how bad this depression is going to get and the response that we're going to see by government that's bought and paid for by these offshore banks. And then the reason I have you back here tonight where we left off on the radio because we ran out of time, you were getting to the road warrior scenario, the violence scenario, and you've been talking about this. And today we had shootings at IHOPs, 
and at H and R blocks, and 48 people shot in New York, and two dead cops. Uh, I mean, th things are uh, metal thieves are stealing everything. They came through our office stealing stuff a few weeks ago. They're cutting the catalytic converters off of the cars while you're inside working. Uh, all the coffee shops I go to are being robbed. I mean, it, but the but but the controlled prostitutes tell me crime isn't going up, and they're cut and they're laying off cops. And the cops that are left are going to be out there raising revenue, writing tickets to old ladies and arresting people with lemonade stands and banning gardens in your yard and, and, and SWAT teaming Gibson guitars. Uh, I mean, it's as if the government is taking PCP or something. Look what's going on in the UK. And you looked at the riots, they call them hooligans and criminals. It's the same thing that's happening around the world. And it's going to happen here in the U.S. You know my saying, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And they're losing it. And you, you, as you mentioned, at the IHOPs, you're going to start seeing, just as they're again, use the U.K. as your model. They're taking away all civil liberties. You read an article that comes out by your favorite uh, girlfriend over there, Janet Napolitano, big sis. I hear you have a crush on her. <laughs> or was it like you liked to crush her? One of the two. But anyway, she's so happy we have all these surveillance cameras around. So as what, what happens is, the more the government loses control, the harder they are going to crack down on us. So when you see a society where so many young people have no education, they can't get jobs, they're whacked out on drugs that, you know, when I was growing up, nobody ever dreamed of. You think you're going to see a lot more violence? And the response is going to be, we got to crack down on crime. So the worse crime becomes, the harder they're going to crack down on us, They'll use it just as the UK, just as the United States used 9-11 to rape out us of constitutional rights. The UK is using that over there, the example that happened in, in Rottingdam, whatever the place was, that, to crack down on civil liberties. So that's where we're going. It's only going to get much worse. Uh, and you were talking about John William Shadow stats, the Great Depression. Look at housing. How many times did they say that the real estate market was turning around? It's worse. It's worse than it was during the Great Depression. And it's only going to get worse. Well, Gerald, my next uh, question is uh, basically going back to Janet Napolitano. She's now criticizing the Drudge Report uh, for carrying my articles and others that broke down the fraud of DHS, lying about the radiation levels, lying and saying we don't grab genitals, we don't go in the pants, we're not saving the images. All of that they've been caught lying about. Uh, all, all the crimes being committed by these people, because who else would want this horrible job? Who else would take a job standing you know, around all these microwave oven x-ray systems now we learn they have eight times the national average at the boston logan where they first put the scanners in seven years ago so, so right there it's a crazy group of people uh and and she's out attacking the media for uh, for basically calling her a jackboot uh, i mean this is incredible she's telling us we're wrong about jackbootism when clearly that's what homeland security is trying to set up in this country and, and my next issue for you is that i know that uh Somebody uh, near and dear to the Trends Research uh, crew uh, has been uh, arrested uh, for having her body painted, something very popular uh, there in New York City. At the same time, we have the just incredible crime uh, exploding. I see reports of New York police ticketing pregnant women that sit on a park bench uh, too long or or uh, uh, people who are caught smoking cigarettes on the street. I mean, the harassment is really kicking into high gear. Exactly. This is what happens when societies break down. Why, look how the people hated the cops in Egypt. They keep breaking down the little people. Yeah, Zoe West, it's all over the news. Wall Street Journal, The Post, The UK Mail. And she was, she's a, an actress. She just finished a role as, as you like it, a Shakespearean role this week. 
and she got her body painted in Times Square uh, th this past week. Five of New York City's finest pounced on her, put her in handcuffs. You have to see these pictures of a 96-pound girl as during the weekend, as you point out, 48 shootings. Yeah, there's more crimes in the naked city than a naked 20... One year old little girl whose body's painted, and you couldn't tell she was naked unless you really looked up close. So, this is what they're doing, Alex. Any little minor violation, it's screw the people, screw the people, and if the people don't stand up and take action, and I'm proud of Zoe for what she did. She had the guts to do it as everybody else is being mowed down when these motor mouths like Napolitano and the rest of them keep telling us what we should believe, what we should do, what we should think. And here's my favorite. As this economy is crashing, you start hearing these Wall Street wankers start yelling out, you know, we need some policy decisions by the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank. They're the bankers. ones that got us into this, and we're hearing that the wonderful, delicate geniuses, as you call them, the precious geniuses, they're going to have new plans. Well, they did create a plan. Trillions in Ponzi schemes that made money on the way up. Then they hold everybody hostage saying, give us more trillions or everything will fail. And now they've screwed things up, as you and many others predicted they would, as common sense in the market shows. And now their answer is, let us set up a bank of the world and pay us VAT taxes and carbon taxes. That'll fix it. You know, I, look, listen, in closing, uh, uh, here with you, Gerald, I really want you uh, to break down any other trends that you see coming in the next six months to a year. Uh, because you did, I remember three years ago on my show, four years ago, predicting the tax rebellion, what's become the Tea Party. And, and, and now the lawlessness. And all over Europe, people are blowing up traffic cameras, blowing up surveillance cameras, spray painting them uh, all over the place. Farmers aren't putting up with GMO being, uh, being grown. And we're starting to see that rebellion here in the U.S. People attack the speed cameras so much in Arizona, they've removed them. So the truth is, the corrupt white shoe boys are powerless when people start to stand up and recognize what they are. So, so you've told us the bad that's coming. What other bad do you see, but also what other good trends uh, do you see? I mean, are we going to see uh, the head of Goldman Sachs, who's gotten the big criminal lawyer from Enron? Are we going to see him indicted? What's coming? You know, you're not going to see any of the big heads roll. All the attention is going to go down to the little people. And they'll keep making examples of us. We're seeing a collapse happening. It's an economic collapse worldwide. China's not going to make it out of it. Brazil's not going to. That old saying, when America sneezes, the world catches a cold. We're the largest consumers, hands down. Us in Europe are going under. And what we're telling people is, know where your money is because we're going to see bank failures one after another. Yeah, I'm understanding from, from people in Greece, they're having trouble getting their money out of the banks. And that banks from uh, Europe are starting to safe haven money over here. This thing is running out of control, and we're telling people to take proactive measures. Number two, look for a false flag attack, be it terror, something along the line along fear and hysteria. Things are going to get very ugly. Crime is going to escalate at levels we've never seen before. And it's going to be, it's going, the prostitutes are going to keep coming out with these phony figures, just like they do with inflation, just like they do with, with unemployment. They're going to come out with them like that in crime. You're not, you better learn how to protect yourself. And you're my three G's, Gerald Salenti's three G's, gold, guns, and a getaway plan. Because well, that's, it's that's not my final, be nice. That's my final uh, question for you, Gerald. We saw Katrina. The government wouldn't, couldn't help, cut the police power uh, lines, cut their communications so FEMA could be the boss because the local police weren't following their orders. Uh, we saw uh, FEMA then go into high and dry areas, take guns. Uh, we saw FEMA ordering everybody around with a little hurricane that hit New York, posing as saviors. They've shown up in Austin with the wildfires, telling everybody to stand down and come to them for orders. They've taken our National Guard, sent them overseas, and so instead we get a bunch of FEMA people. You know, my issue is government can't and won't protect you 
But in the Great Depression, we had 90% of people that were rural self-sufficient. Now we're over 90% that are urban and not self-sufficient. If 7 million people died or starved to death from complications and malnutrition in the Great Depression and then the Great Dust Bowl, what are we talking about in a total collapse here? I mean, is this going to be like uh, the road or something? Uh, with Vigo Mortensen? I mean, is this going to be some type of hellish situation? Because if we do have a global complete collapse, uh, my God, it, it's going to be epic what happens. It's the beginning of the first great war of the 21st century. It's already happening. And what they do, for instance, you go over when it happened over in the Middle East, what did they say in Egypt? Well, you know, it's Islamo-fascists. And the same thing in Bahrain. And then when it happens in the UK, they call it hooligans. And it's going to happen in the US, and they're going to say, oh, it's those tea partiers. And when it happens over in Greece, they call it the anarchists. The war is underway. It's class warfare. It's off with their heads 2.0. It's going to be a battle between the, the haves and the have-nots, and only a very few have everything, and way too many have much too little. Gerald Salente, thank you. Uh, you know, the great uh, thing about our TV show is that it's always 30 minutes, but when we need to, we can go longer here at InfoWarsNews.com and uh, the new uh, weeknight transmission. And we really appreciate your tireless work now more than ever. Alternative media is becoming the mainstream media. That's why we're hearing about internet kill switches. That's why we're hearing about shutting down people for their speech. We're seeing more and more reports that people criticizing government and being pessimist. We're causing the problems. No, we're pointing out the authors of our economic destruction. And out of this crisis, we could wake people up and have a reawakening to liberty and freedom. And it's thanks to the trendsjournal.com and trendsresearch.com that we're able to do this. Gerald, for folks that want to get your uh, trend alerts, one went out yesterday, or they want to get the quarterly uh, detailed Trends Research Journal, how do they find out more? Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And Alex, we know people are having a difficult time. We have a discount request page there. Just fill it out. We'll do our very best to get it to you because the purpose of the Trends Journal is twofold, to inspire people so that they could take their future into their own hands and also prepare them for what comes ahead. And I thank you for what you're doing, but I have to correct you. You're not, all, you're not alternative media. You're the mainstream media. The other one's alternatives. The alternative for losers that want to keep staying lost. ABC, CBS, NBC, the houses of prostitution. Well, more and more we are becoming the new media, the dominant media, and that's why the system is panicking. And you're absolutely right. I, I think one of the last dominoes to fall is that we don't realize we are the majority, but all the numbers, all the research, all the polls, 85% of Americans want to abolish uh, the Fed or at least audit it. Uh, people are really waking up, and that's why, that's why the system is trying to set up this police state. Gerald Salente, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you, Alex. All right, folks, there goes Gerald Salente. Be sure and check out his websites at trendsjournal.com and trendsresearch.com. Our websites, of course, are infowars.com, prisonplanet.tv, and prisonplanet.com. We're fighting the creation of a prison planet run by modern 21st century uh, oligarchs trying to put us on the global plantation with the Infowar. Hence, infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. I want to thank Paul Watson for joining us earlier with his excellent uh, breakdown of the fact that Al-Qaeda uh, is now admittedly being put into power in Libya and that the official 9-11 fable is now being uh, put into the textbooks for our young uh, helpless people that have been turned over to the government training centers. I want to thank the crew and everyone that makes InfoWars nightly news possible. And we'll see you back unless the wildfires get to us here, and they're pretty close. Uh, Lord willing, tomorrow night, Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Central, and of course with Alex Jones Live, that's the radio slash TV show from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central every single weekday as well. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Infowar. We'll see you back tomorrow live.